following is a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about them, Cowboys? Yeah! This is Talkin' Cowboys, streaming live from the Dallas Cowboys World Headquarters at the Star in Frisco. Hand off, Elliott plowing to the goal line, Barry sacked by Lord, Prescott keeps it, and he bangs it into the touchdown. And now your hosts, Isaiah Stanback, Heckma Harrison, Rob Phillips, and Kyle Yeomans. It is a wonderful Tuesday of Talking Cowboys, presented yeah. by Tostitos, helping fans get in on the game. And our favorite chip and our favorite dip of Talking Cowboys. No double dip. Welcome in, everybody, as we are back in the SWBC studios, having some fun along the way. <laughs> Isaiah Stanback. Hello. We're in the bright yellow jersey today. Right. I want to make sure y'all see me since the you guys see my back all the time. The yellow submarine in the building. Yes, sir. That's him. That's it. That's playing high, we're playing hide and go seek after this. La Liga. <laughs> Huh? La Liga. Yeah. I love it. Yeah, you have no idea. <laughs> Name one other team in La Liga. I don't, man, I, I know the person's jersey Name, I'm wearing. Name one Kenny other team. Kenny Kessler. Oh. Shout out to one of my clients, Kenny Kessler. That is impressive. Trainer man. from high school all the way to playing pro. That's hey, pretty cool. Wait a minute. Dude. You said La Liga. He said, what? Ooh. Well, then. <laughs> <laughs> He's got a big patch on his right sleeve. <laughs> You see me? You've never heard of Real Madrid? I have. FC Barcelona. Oh, I'm starting to learn a lot more about soccer because I'm trying to introduce my kids to watching more soccer, well, being that we're financially soccer. invested. So I'm like, you guys got to watch them dog on soccer. So yeah. now we're just watching games and I'm learning. That's yeah. a good thing for you because your facility is in Capel, right? Yeah, we're in Louisville now. Louisville now, that's yeah, right. Louisville. Okay, still a hotbed of soccer talent. A lot of DFW, soccer. Because Capel, Louisville, Hebron, Absolutely. always usually really good in the soccer yep. game. Heckma Harrison back in studio as What's always. How's it going, my friend? I'm good. Hey. Good. Feels good to be back in studio. You know why? Why is that? Because Rob Phillips is back. Rob P. Missed last week, but we are glad to have you back and ready to go. How yeah, you? we discussed a minute ago where I was. Let's not talk about no, that. We're not going to do it's it. Just, it's just good to be back. It's it just is. good to be back, period. It's great to be yeah, back. <laughs> <laughs> That's as far as we need to go. We'll be here for the next uh, hour. I love our hour shows, man. I love the hour shows. Well, it, you get a chance to kind of... Lay back. Show the personality a little bit more. It's not as straightforward business as we do a lot of times. We're going to get you a smaller hoodie, man. Why is that? Because you, you slim. Slimming down. Hey, dog, I'm on slim. I, I, I'm with you. I'm locked oh, in. The jeans. I don't know who baggier. upstairs wants to challenge me right now, but it probably wouldn't be a good idea. Why don't you stop it? I, Just here. stop it. I'm feeling, I'm feeling good. I hit a, I I hit a hit PR. I hit a, fir, I hit a PR today. That I haven't hit in some time. I guess it's not a PR, but I guess it's you I mean, my two hundred. No, no, I did a two eighty five on some hand cleans and three forty on bench. That's what really surprised me. And it was, it, was, it didn't move. It didn't move pretty. If, there was some left. I had now, some left in the tank. It wasn't like struggle bus. You're about seventy percent of what Rob can do on a normal day Dang, basis. Y'all, you're almost I mean, there. What do you think your bench is right now? Just me? straight up, like if you had to, like to save your life. What could you bet? Yeah, to get the, che- the the bar off your chest. The bar is forty five. The yeah. bar is forty five. <laughs> he knows that. Put a. Hey, I pl- I mean, I used P- to, I used to lift. Come not, on, P- not like I said. I'll tell you. Let me. T- I don't know. Slap a couple tens on each side. <laughs> so, you know, no tens. You can do more than that. I'm, you got you more can, than that. I tell you what. We curl we, some we, tens. We tape, yeah. <laughs> We taped our season in review show a couple weeks ago, and Isaiah just every time you talk about weights, it just I just like I just want to go crawl in the corner. And we were about to tape it, and Isaiah, it's like he, you came late because yep. you were you were late. You had you had business, yep. And you're you're dressing in studio, and it took a while. You, I mean, you had to button up. You're like, God, this shirt's tight. I, I did too many push ups today. And I'm like, my God. <laughs> Just, just putting me straight. Well, during the, the season, during the season, it's at least for myself for my schedule. It's hard to maintain the regimen that I would like to. So I, I literally, I get skinny, man. I get thin. Now you're bulking the, up for the fight. Yeah, skin. I get thin. Maybe well, it's the shirt. I go down, so my weight fluctuates. So I'm anywhere from two on the light end. I'm two fifteen. At the high end, I'm like two forty, two forty two. <laughs> so right now I'm like two forty. Yeah. But when I was playing here, I was two oh seven. 
Man, Man don't skinny. nobody want to talk weights and weight with you. Well, you're losing weight. All right. I mean, but come on. You you open up the show. Up. Yeah, PR. I, I was excited. I, to put that I can't, be, I can't gas about? my... The reason... <laughs> like, listen, hang no, I have to um, gas myself up because there's some gentlemen upstairs me, that feel as if they're still going to challenge me. Let me tell you something. They're still talking about it, Ruffy. With Barry or yeah. Danny? Danny. 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 No, no, no. Danny Danny's sizes not, me up every no, single Danny's time. Danny's not going to back down. But here's the thing. I just thought in my head about what it would be to bench press 340 pounds right now. It's a lot of weight. And let me tell you something. Bayla Scott and White is <laughs> next door, and I'm so happy we, that they are. We could get you there fast. You'd Eric Weddle out here? <laughs> I don't know if that's a stroke or did I just pull my labrum. <laughs> pop, pop both. That tore two that, pectorals. Three, 40. That, that rip wasn't clothing. That was my bicep. <laughs> that's my bicep. No, that's my That's my an ugly sight, too. You don't want to see that. Oh, goodness. We're going to get a new drop out of this. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Something out of there needs to be no, cut. No, he just said... I'm, right now, I'm going to gas myself up. I'm going to get that. <laughs> I'm gonna gas up. <laughs> oh, goodness. But really, credit to, to both of you guys down at the end of the table. Heckman's me. looking fantastic. Appreciate Isaiah's dog. bulking up. It looks fantastic. You, you guys are an inspiration one to Rob days, and I. Dog, yeah, we got work maybe, to do. Maybe one day we'll get in there. We got work to do. We'll figure it out. All right, let's talk about the Cowboys a little bit. <laughs> There's been a lot going on the last <laughs> week around the star. Maybe not so much uh, on the field or anything. We're still kind of waiting for that March 8th, March 14th, when we finally get to start building this roster again toward 2020. And we're going to talk about that a little bit later on, talking a little draft as well. Are you optimistic about those dates? Like, when you think about the 14th, 16th, are you like – is there up? Is there is that a light at the end of the tunnel? A tunnel? Or is that the freight train coming at is you? Is it the freight train? Which <laughs> one is it? I mean, how are you thinking about that? I think that's the biggest question right now. Okay. Is because there's so much pure negativity around the mm. cap situation. Twenty one million dollars over the cap. That's the number you hear day in and day out around here. You've got to find a way to make the right decisions on who is leaving because there are going to be many guys who leave here and you're going to be disappointed. So it might look like the f- the freight train coming right at you and that's the light that's at the end of the tunnel. It's coming at you. Rather than there's a lot of optimism around this team. And Rob, you'd probably add to this as well. With the cap situation at hand, it goes back to what the Jones family has been talking about. There are tough decisions on the horizon and those decisions are nearing very quickly. Yeah, the, the franchise tag window starts today. Mm. You got until March 8th to tag somebody if you want to tag somebody. I don't know if they will, because to your point, <laughs> trying to slot a guaranteed one year salary that's the top five average of any position in the league or top 10 if it's a transition tag, that's, that's going to be tough to do. I think if you're a fan, heck, you, know, you might say freight train just because, <laughs> you know, they don't. Fans want to see the big splash, and I I don't think that's going to happen, especially not this year. It hasn't happened since, I don't know, Brandon Carr in 2012, uh, where they really spent big on the first week of free agency. And I think they've, if you listen to Stephen Jones talk, like they're they've warned us they're they're going to be very judicious with the cap room that they do have. And to your point, they're going to have to get creative just to create the room, and and they can do that, and they will do that. They do it every year, yeah. but. Um, they don't have a bunch to spend, and that's what happens when, uh, you know, for starters, your starting quarterback is taking up thirty plus million on the cap. It's all, always about the slice of the pie, but you've got to find a way to fill the roster that you feel good about, especially when you have that core foundation. I was on a podcast this weekend, and they asked me that same question: Where do you feel like your expectations are right this second? about the 2022 season. Mm. And I still kind of said they're decently high because you have a foundation because you have a quarterback. Yeah, you you paid him a lot of money, but you still feel very comfortable at, at that Dak Prescott can be that quarterback to lead you to the promised land. But you also have a core of young players as well that you really do feel good about moving forward. So, Isaiah, I ask you that same question. Is there any chance that your expectations shift over the next couple of weeks because – well, right now they feel bad, but there's still some optimism there as well. They already they shifted when the when the when the clock went to zero. It's the reason being, you know, I've I be, I personally believe that they missed their window. I personally think it's closed. I think that window's yeah. no WD forty. Wow, right? I think the window's closed because you had a stacked roster. You had a stacked coaching staff, and you still retain majority of them. I was about to say they're yeah, they're, they're back, coaching, they're, they're back. <clears throat> and you had a stacked roster. Now, 
you're faced with the same decision. You have to face this every single offseason. Oh, we got to make tough decisions. Oh, we got to okay, we got to cut some guys. We got to let some guys go. Guys that we would love to sign back. We're not going to be able to hold them all. You hear the same little rhetoric every single year, but this year is even it's even greater because you know everybody everybody in Cowboys Nation know you're going to lose some a great player, a great player on offense and or defense. You're going to lose a superstar. You're yeah. going to lose a superstar on offense and or defense. And I say and because it might possibly be two. They're gonna have, when I, when they say tough decisions, this is not like oh, oh we couldn't retain Curse, you know he's a really good player. He made a lot of great con- contributions. We're not gonna be able to retain. Now this is gonna be something seismic. Yeah, that you're gonna that's gonna happen, and people are gonna be boo hoo. <laughs> <laughs> you know your whole cap myth. You know the cap is a myth. Every year, teams that say we're in cap trouble, they 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 find a way. Mm-hmm. Uh, whether you use the word kicking it, kick the can down the road, whatever, reshuffle, reschedule, whatever the, you're gonna do with the money, we can we can restructure guys, right? There, guys are gonna get cut. We know that last year, we're going into this year, that may be the same thing. So I don't worry about that as much because mm-hmm. I, I know that there are the powers that be that are going to figure this out. You still got to sign all your draft picks as well. Yep. So if we lose some guys, let's just say on defense, we talked about it last week. Maybe we lose a tank. Maybe we lose a Jerron Curse. That's why the draft in other areas may become more pivotal uh, than before. And also, look. We hadn't gotten to this point, but free agency is going to be very important. I mean, we've gone over the years where you wanted to sign Stephon Gilmore. We wanted to sign a certain free agent safety for the Seattle from, oh. from back in the day. That that didn't happen, all right? We didn't do, was it Jamal Adams in those times that we could have gotten those sign, signings done? I still believe that there are going to be those free agents out there that can make an immediate impact that may – allow you to forget about some of the guys that you lose. Yes, the team is going to be different, but the majority of teams from top to bottom are going to be different. We should expect it. I think, to your point, Heck, like I, I, they've, they did a great job last year mm-hmm. signing guys, like targeting guys, especially on defense, like Dan Quinn, this fits his scheme. Carl, and you just go down the list. Carlos Watkins, Terrell Basham, Keanu Neal, Malik Hooker, Casey, Curse, like – they really, I mean, I don't know if they batted a thousand, but it was pretty close yeah, to they it. Killed it. The problem with that is, I mean, you look the year before though, and they batted a hundred, <laughs> whatever yep. it was on, on defense. <laughs> yes. And I do think when you're when you're wading into the the later waves pools of free agency, that's more of a challenge because you got guys that, you know. It, it's it's not the market's not as as robust and and you, you're you're taking chances on players that there's something either they're not proven or they've been hurt or some and so I think and that's what they're going to continue to do so they've got to nail that I mean we talk about nailing the draft all the time that's a given they've got to find a way to replicate what they did last year and I think that's going to be challenging however I do think I mean to Isaiah's point like they they missed a huge opportunity but the division still doesn't look very good. And not right now. Not, not right now. And you know, some of the teams that we think they're they're facing is going to be really difficult. Who is Green Bay's quarterback? Who's Tampa Bay's quarterback? All of a sudden, those two games don't look as difficult when you talk about a first place schedule. Yeah. So, I, I still think they can definitely win the division and put themselves back in position. Are they going to be as good as they were last year? Are they going to be as deep? Are they going to be as healthy? That's the question. And I think I, to me, the it comes down to. Can can they get Dak in position to be dominant in the playoffs? Back to where he was early in the season. To me, that's where the, that's the key to the season. No matter what they do in the offseason. Basically, whenever you look at the contract for Dak Prescott, and we've talked about this at length and on this show, but whenever you pay a quarterback that much money, he's supposed to make up for the shortcomings. He's supposed to fill the gaps of a roster that may not be as strong. You see that around the league with. Green Bay and and Aaron Rodgers. This year wasn't the best (laughs) roster Green Bay has ever had around Aaron Rodgers, yet they still were the number one seed. And, of course, they ended in disappointment as well. So it it becomes a question on on his category. You – do you feel that way about Dak Prescott still? Do you feel like he can make up for the shortcomings? Because this year there were no shortcomings to a certain extent on, around the roster. There were certainly holes, but for the most part, you like you said, you were stacked. You had the talent. You had the health. You felt good going into the postseason, yet you had a shortcoming as a whole. 
this year there are going to be plenty of shortcomings that are going to be on that roster. Can Dak Prescott fill that void? Y'all know I have defended Dak to no end. You know I have, you know, and and not apologized about it. Sure. I feel as though, you know, Dak, when, when you start mentioning those other quarterbacks, the identity of those teams are that quarterback. When you think of the Dallas Cowboys, that's not the identity of this team. And I don't know how you change that. Even if Dak has the that success next year, I still think that there are other things that you are starting to ask yourself, what is going to be the identity of this team? We would think that it was Zeke, the running game, but we've gotten away from that completely to the point that, even when you start grading the the running game, you grade it on a curve mm-hmm. because 17 games, you got a thousand, you know, things like that. Still, that's not our identity. Dak has to step up and be that. If last year was his confidence was down or waned because of the the injury that he had the year before, if there was some mental residual from that, all those things he has to get over and take a be- another step in his second year. I'm Kyle, to answer your question, yes, I believe that he can be. Yeah. I believe that he will be. I don't think that he was a difference maker last year, and I just got to keep it real. It's in true. The, in those games where he could have been the difference, he didn't. You pointed out there are times where we needed him to use his legs. Did he use them? No. All right, there were times where there were awful turnovers. There were games <laughs> where, obviously, we needed an additional throw from our quarterback. He couldn't make it. Uh, next year, we can't have, the same, can't have the same conversation. And when you look around the league at the guys that do, obviously, that's the separation between him and those, quote-unquote, elite quarterbacks. I've been on this island and not Rob P. Island by myself for a couple of years you now are. with you guys. And I've been there. I've been there, right? I remember when, when Andy Dalton got signed and I said that he had a stronger arm, all those kind of things. I, people have been throwing torches at me for a long time. IRS Island. IRS Island. Is there. Is that happened. That's a, that's a place. It's a desert. That's a place. American Airlines down, doesn't fly there. Drop I don't think. place. Uh, have however. To get a couple boats and row it yourself. <laughs> exactly. Paddleboard. Uh, I still stand. On this island and say that I don't believe Dak is an elite quarterback. <coughs> I think he's a good quarterback. I think he's a really good quarterback at times. But when you start thinking about the quarterbacks that are considered elite, you have full confidence in those quarterbacks that they are going to win you the ball game. No doubt about it. It doesn't matter what the opponent presents. You feel like they're ready for any situation. It doesn't matter what the situation is. You feel like they've already been through it a thousand, a thousand times, and you just know that they're going to get you out of it. And you think about uh, even as bad as Seattle is, you still have hope in Russell Wilson, right? You you got Aaron Rodgers. You just know Aaron Rodgers is going to get you out of the situation. TB12. There's just some guys, Drew Brees, when he was playing, you just knew there were some guys that once they're on the field, I don't give a dog on what they do. They're going to – he's going to find his way out of this. You don't get that with Dak. And – what is it going to take? It's going to take victories. What is it going to take? It's going to take tough games. It's going to take, you know, getting out of bad situations. It's going to take dominant performances. It's going to take accuracy. It's going to take velocity. It's going to take decision making. All these things, right? There's not just one thing that's going to happen and say, you know what? He's elite now, right? He's just not that guy yet. Can he be? Absolutely. What is it going to take for him to take that step? I don't know, but I know that they have to start stacking up these wins and you can't miss out on opportunities like they had this year. That was a huge letdown. No I don't doubt. think anybody would say any different. And those types of losses and those types of opportunities where he does not step into that role is what prevents him from being, quote-unquote, elite. Did you, th- did you think uh, Matt Stafford was in that category until he had that winning drive? The no, other night, I still don't put Matt Stafford still, in there. I just, I just, I still think that he just has a. I mean, he's a really good quarterback. Yeah, I, I would put. I mean, I would put so, Dak and Matthew Stafford kind of right on the there. Same. Yeah. So, so the, because I'm with you. Like, I think the list when you talk, it's short. And you mentioned Hall of Fame guy, like guys that are punched their ticket yes. already to yep. the Hall of Fame. There, that is a special type of quarterback. And I, I agree with you. I mean, I think, I think Dak can get there. Mm-hmm. I think Matt Stafford. People thought maybe he couldn't get there. He got there. I think. Like, Hex right. Like, he's got to elevate his play, and he's said that. Um, but I think there's some things around him that have to be elevated, too. And we've mm-hmm. talked about the scheme. I mean, I think they've got to find ways to scheme things up to make things better for him. And, and I know it sounds like excuses, but I think when you fail, when you fail like this and there's a problem offensively for 10 weeks and it doesn't fully get fixed unless you're kind of playing bad teams, it's not just 
the quarterback. It's not just the offensive coordinator. I think we've talked about a lot of things. There's a lot of reasons why it didn't work. I think the offensive line was a factor too, and they've got to address that from a personnel side. I think it's going to take a lot of things to get yeah. to figure out what happened to this offense down the stretch and get it right. I totally agree with you. If you had to compare the Cincinnati Bengals to the Dallas Cowboys, that's so not fair. It's very much fair it, because you, I mean, the quarterback. You got to talk new, about the quarterback is just new, two different. Guys, I'm just man. saying, just the teams. Okay. Just the team. I'm not even talking about the individuals. Okay. Just the teams. Yeah. I'm interested to see where you're going because right now I'm with Heckma. I don't think it's a fair conversation. <laughs> How can you – why is it not fair to compare those two? Because, because – go ahead, man. You, know, you no. go for it. No, you, you, you said it first. I'll back you up. No, it's, it's just I think that quarterback is – his level of elite is where you – he's the quintessential first-round draft pick in the NFL draft. Period. You look over the, the time in the league, he is that guy okay. for that. The throws that he makes, he is a difference maker mm -hmm. to that. The velocity, all of those things, that's him. Mm -hmm. Burrow, and just uh, there's no way that he is not the future of not only the NFL. It. It's going to be the AFC. Just everybody said to themselves, like, oh, crap. Mm -hmm. This guy is going to make it hard on us yeah. for a very long time. I just don't see Dak. In that same breath, I just he's not there. Okay. My my whole thing is that was, that was, um, it, it's a great point. It, you guys it, mean in terms of just being able to elevate everything else? Around. Sure. That that's that's what you guys mean. Because we can agree the Bengals had half of what the Cowboys had. Yes, personnel wise, they are the exception, not the rule. In terms of building a roster, name the last I don't time know about half. I don't know about half. I mean they've got they've got the best young receiver in the league, and and but they don't have an offensive line. That, right? No offensive line. They do yeah. have a good running game. They don't have a good offensive line. How many all pros do we have on offensive line? Two. Yeah. Okay. And they had how many? Zero. Okay. So yeah. go ahead. One, your left tackle was not right the whole season. Here's you got, what you got Zach. The line was not the you're line about, was you're not the 2016 You're line talking about a team year. that was giving up seven sacks a game I, sometimes. I, I would, I'm with you there. But and he still figured it out. So that's why so it's. Pearl is. is different. Okay, so we're, so we're saying, saying so we're saying, saying Burrow's above Dak. Is that what we're saying? Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. At least there's this nothing year. wrong with that. This year, yeah. I think right. I think it could be the other way around next year. No doubt in my mind. So, I think Dak so Prescott can get by, back to being a mobile Dak Prescott. Absolutely, it's a decision. It's absolutely just a decision. So by saying that, though, by saying that, <laughs> oh man, let's not go this way. <laughs> Here's the thing. If no, go Dak, this if, way. If, go. If, if Dak improves his game. There should be zero excuses for this entire organization, is what we're saying. Yes. Can he improve his game? Because Bur their defense was was good. It wasn't freaking amazing. I'm talking about Cincinnati, that is. Yeah. Okay. Their offensive line was terrible. Their defense was pretty darn good. Their defense played well. Yeah. Right. But they didn't have names like the personnel. I guess I'm talking about personnel. I'm not even talking about schemes. I'm talking about just personnel. If you took the Cincinnati roster and you're playing a game of blitz, old school blitz, and you took their roster and you picked the Cowboys, you're picking the Cowboys all day long. Is it possible we just pumped up the Cowboys roster and the personnel on that side of the no, football a little bit too much? I don't think so. I think they play well. Okay. I, I like, like the rabbit hole you're taking us down. This is a, this is fair. Hole. <laughs> this is fair. This is fair. No, if the, no, if the Cincinnati Bengals play the Dallas Cowboys, who should win that game? Cowboys. Talent-wise. But you know that it doesn't always work out on paper versus on the field. If you and put them on the field, who should win that game? But who was in the Super Bowl? The Rams I, The Rams had the, the better Giving up seven sacks a game. Yeah, absolutely. And, he, and they Come still on. found a way to do what? Man, Get to I, the Super Bowl. I'm kind of with Kyle. Like, I think this is a very talented team, but I, I, I watched every playoff game, and I think sometimes maybe we're a little too close to it. And we think, mm -hmm. you know, this is elite, elite, elite talent, and there's – a lot of teams have really good players. I'm I'm with you if you stack the rosters one through fifty three. I take the Cowboys talent, but I think the Bengals. I think they had they show they had some really good players they had a good defensive line. Yeah, I, I, you know, but name, I, a, name a position group aside from quarterback that you would swap out with Cincinnati. Uh, Jamar Chase. Yeah, a position group. Yeah, okay. give me the wide receivers. <laughs> yeah. You would take Cincinnati's wide receivers over Dallas wide receivers. Jamar Higgins. Chase, Higgins, and and Boyd. Wow, Those three a, were fantastic. Wow, that's a conversation we weren't having last year. No, no it's not. No, no it's not. But then 2021. Jamar different. He's different. And I just want to go back to the Dak argument. It, it, it's, it's seven give me their D-tackles, too, by the way. At seven years, he's seven years in the league, and even talking about potential with a quarterback that's been in the league for seven years, like at, at what point are you what you – you're that. 
All right. You are what you are. Yeah. Who are you today? I'm just asking questions. Wow. <laughs> I'm just asking questions. <laughs> One thing you know that you get from number four <laughs> is that you get a you get a leader. Yep. You get a guy that's going to go out there and ball like a dog. You, I mean, regardless if he has some shortcomings in, in mm-hmm. his arm, he's going to give you everything Absolutely. you got. And I think that's what got him the massive contract is you knew mm-hmm. you got a guy that's going to put it on the line every week. Does that make him Marino? Does that make him Montana? No, I'm not going to jump out the cake like that. So you asked me about Joe Burrow. I'm going to be honest with you. Joe I Burrow is a honesty. baller. Okay, he can make all of the throws. He tight window throws. He can do that. I don't know if four could do that, but if I had a game to win, I would say I need four. I need four for that one. Even the numbers dictate that he has more come behind victories than guys that were even in his class. That that shows that he is that winner. To go back to what you were saying, if I do, I depend on what, can he? He's already showed you that he could do that. Yeah. That he could come back from behind. That he can win you. That's what he's done. And the stats say that Isaiah. It's an interesting it's, it's conversation. It's a good conversation. <laughs> I, think it's, I think it's the key to 2022. <laughs> no, it if is. Dak, if Dak can be Dak from the first six games, and what Jerry Jones always says is if, I, if I've if i seen it, I know it can happen. And through six, seven games, Dak looked like maybe the MVP of the league. Yeah. They have to get him back to – he has to get back to that. When we come back on the other side of the break, I want to talk about this a little bit more, and I want to talk about the lessons learned from 2021 in that regard, kind of going off of your point. Continuing this, we'll also take your fan questions. I sent out a tweet, fans on the 50 coming up here in just a couple of moments. When we come back on Talking Cowboys. There's nothing as unique as our eyes, which is why SLR pioneers ways to make lenses as unique as you. Verilux for super sharp vision, Essential Blue for protection, and Crizal for freedom from glare. Three cutting edge solutions in a single unique lens. So whatever your needs, insist on Essilor. Visit your local Essilor experts and find the perfect lens for you. See more, do more, Essilor. Want to use what the pros use? How about the official men's skincare brand of the Dallas Cowboys? Jack Black. Right now you can get the Jack Black Starter, a curated collection of Cowboys locker room favorites for just 10 bucks with free shipping. The starter includes four Jack Black skincare favorites plus a full-sized intense therapy lip balm. Go to getjackblack.com slash cowboys and use the code word TEAMJB. That's getjackblack.com slash cowboys. The Jack Black Starter, 10 bucks, free shipping. At AT AT&T, everyone, new and existing customers, get our best deals on every smartphone. Why? Because you deserve it. For turning your living room into your office and your gym. For teaching grandma how to video call and teaching her again. It's the button on your left, Nana. Okay, your other left. It's not complicated. Everyone deserves something new. So AT&T has given everyone new and existing customers our best deals with every unlimited plan on every smartphone, even the latest ones. AT&T may temporarily slow data speeds if the network is busy. Restrictions and exceptions may apply. Hi, I'm Clint Tillerson with... And I'm Jay Novacek. And we're both with... United United Ag and Turf. Turf. The official tractor provider of the Dallas Cowboys. So, if you need a tractor to bale some hay, a mower to cut some grass, or a gator to get some chores done... Get a John Deere at United Ag and Turf. And then, let's get to work. Hey, Jay, that's my line. (laughs) Well, not today. Get to work with a John Deere tractor package that's just right for you and your budget. Visit unitedagandturf.com. Back to Talking Cowboys. Back here on Talking Cowboys, having a fun time here on a Tuesday. (laughs) Glad you're with us. And, of course, your favorite WWE superstars return to AT&T Stadium for WrestleMania on Saturday, April 2nd, and Sunday, April 3rd, 2022. Get your tickets to the most stupendous two-night WrestleMania in history. Visit SeatGeek.com, the official ticketing provider of AT&T Stadium. April 1st at American, they are doing the and, uh, enshrinement. No, yeah, SmackDown is an enshrinement of the Undertakers into the Hall of Fame. Oh, man, he hadn't called me yet from uh, backstage. I'm saying, you that? were there. Oh. What's up with that, Robbie? Oh. So, no, <laughs> the disappointment. He yeah, hadn't called me yet. <laughs> so you got three days in Dallas of just straight WWE fire. I love it. Man, yeah. man. That's a lot. We've been made friends, you know? We're, hey, Rob. <laughs> what Rob said. He hadn't called me yet. I heard one-on-one, you know, it was special. How tall would you say he is? I was doing this when he was on the sidelines. He's 6'11". Is he really? Yeah. I know they sometimes they gas it up. But yeah, he's he's good. He's a legit six ten. Rob is not yeah. a small guy. For those of you wondering no. who are listening to this, 
Rob is not small. You're what, 6'3", 6'4"? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if he's looking up. All athlete. All (laughs) athlete. Oh, dude. My knees of iron. In my very distant past, the Undertaker said, hey, Rob Phillips, talking Cowboys, how you doing, man? And Rob passed out. Yep, he legit was on the floor. Uh, 45 pounds. By the way, I want to fix this real quick. Talking Cowboys, presented by Tostitos, America's chip for America's team. They have a new slogan that we got to throw out there. So no longer helping fans get in on the game. It's America's chip for America's team. But, yeah, go get your WWE tickets. Is Stone Cold Steve Austin going to be there? There's a rumor, oh, right? Dude, man. Oh, I oh, that would be so. I dope. know nothing. I know nothing. Oh. Are tickets on sale? Yes. Oh yeah, they've been on sale. Seatgeek.com. Shoot. Two night event. Yeah, go get you go one, one or both. You nights. go to though, you know? Ah, yeah. You know this? They're gonna start it off with some fire. You know they're gonna. Let me tell you. Let me fire. tell you. Let me tell you. Go to both. Mm. Uh, easy money. Yeah. Go yeah. Both. Go to Seat both. Geek, huh? Seatgeek.com Man. or the app. The app is phenomenal. Man, so. you're teasing me with this stone cold. Rumor. If Stone yeah, Cold's there, then get me a ticket because I want to go. If, well, the, just, it's just if the Rock comes, it's going to be oh, that too. I might fall over. I've been there for Man, that one. I believe he came dope. last time. Dude. He did? Yeah, he yeah, did last yeah, time. Last time with the fire. I was there yeah. for that. That was dope. All right. I want to continue this Dak Prescott conversation. And and maybe not Dak Prescott conversation, but mostly roster building Stop it. around him. I'm looking at the over-the-cap <laughs> situation. $21, <laughs> 22000000 million over the cap. I, I've brought up this website. It's called overthecap.com. You can go do this yourself as okay. well. It's got a little calculator. Yeah, have some fun you. with it. It's a good site. Yeah. Uh, it's definitely a great site. They do a good job of it. I have done the worst case scenario, and we've talked about this before on this this podcast, but I've cut Demarcus Lawrence and Amari Cooper, mm. and we still only have twelve million dollars in cap space. <laughs> back up, back up. You just did what? I cut Demarcus Lawrence post June one, and I cut Amari Cooper. Uh, Pre June one, did you restructure Dak yet? I have not restructured Dak yet, so that's the only two moves I've done. So I went worst case scenario, <laughs> twelve million dollars. So basically, you still have <laughs> to, you still have to sign your entire draft class, which will be six, seven, eight picks, and that's probably going to take ten million out Ooh. of your salary cap. So you still only have two million dollars to play around with, and that's baseline without signing anybody else. So there's a strong possibility. That, like Isaiah said in the first segment, you're losing multiple superstars. Do you still feel comfortable with Dak filling that up and and having the same kind of success, or do you feel like he is hamstrung without the same kind of talent around him moving into the 2022 season? That's the biggest question right now, and I think that's a question that the Cowboys front office has to answer. Well, the Cowboys have the third worst. Yes. <coughs> Packers are worse, <clears throat> worse than that. and the Saints. Saints. <clears throat> And Jeez. both of those teams. Are the just, Rams are in a better position than the it's Cowboys. The, Ram, the Rams. It's like we talk about the Bengals, how like the Bengals debunk every explanation so for what Rams. went wrong. It's, in terms of salary cap, it's like how the Rams do this. Yep. You know? What, we, what were we even arguing about last week? I don't know. What, what are we talking about? What did you argue about? What were we even arguing about? We arguing about <laughs> Talk about the Rams and what they did in their salary cap and went worse than them. What are you even talking about? What are you even talking about? I don't know. I don't Go back know. and listen well, to okay. it. Well, okay. I will, I will say this. I think with the Vaughn trade, Stop this. I think Denver paid like the rest of, of his salary. Yeah. Same the big, thing with the, the Odell. Thing Same is, thing with Odell. Yeah. The big thing is they have no draft picks coming up. They have none. They have, I mean, they, Odell was a free agent, by the way. Yeah. I mean, at some point, oh, yeah. the lack of draft oh, picks will get them. Once the roster, because they're gonna have to, they're probably gonna have to let some free agents go. I think it will That's get them at some point. They'll but, just look at the Super but, Bowl. Yeah, but it doesn't. Ah. Does it matter? It, yeah, it does. I don't know if it matters. It doesn't. Yeah. Nope. Less needs shirt. You know, f them picks. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Rob P. Island Rob back P. in the what it said. building, baby. That's what it said. That it did. Happened. It did say that. They can create room. <laughs> they can. The they can create room. The they can restructure guys. They can do just what the Rams do, mm. and they can create enough room. And they're going to have to because you, you've got to replace. Tw- I mean, potentially twenty spots or whatever. I mean, some guys will be back, but. They, they, they'll they make the room, but they're not going to take a huge bite of the free agent apple. They just don't do that. They're going to do what they've been doing, and that's a yeah. week or two into free agency, start finding guys on one-year deals. And Florida teams are about to spend some money. Mm-hmm. Oh, it's a cool website. Thanks. Are you playing around with it? I'm looking at it. I'm yeah. looking at it. The Bengals have the fourth best situation. Mm-hmm. Mm. I did restructure Dak, and now it gave me 28 cap, so... 
even that gives you an opportunity to go and mess around with yeah. it a little more. But I still also cut to Marcus Lawrence and Amari Cooper. So oh, let's man. back off of that a little bit. You want to cut? You want to back off of that? Yeah, let's back off. All right. Of that so a I cut bit. Amari, or yeah, only Amari nine million dollars, and now I've only cut to Marcus, and it's twelve million again but with you, the restructure. How does, of God, how does that make you better though? It okay. doesn't. I it just, doesn't. I don't know. Look. Look, we had a situation last year where we still had dead money that we were dealing with. I mean, so we, we have it now. Absolutely. Um, but some of that dead money's fallen off, I believe. You know, uh, was it Joe McCoy was still there? Um, obviously, we, we cut Jalen Smith and paid him just not to be here. Yep. Um, so, and I think that was the offensive. <laughs> Yeah, stop. There's just that dead money situation that we had. I mean, but then, again, this year, wh- how do we get better is, has been my theme with cutting tank. You know, the production the production has to obviously be there from tank. I think yeah. the foot injury definitely limited him. The only one to me is, is Coop. That's the, the big mystery because if we can't figure out a way to get Coop the ball, then we're wasting him. And – it may not be the conventional wisdom approach, but I, I really have a problem with the way that we, we utilize his talents. We just didn't. Mm. I, I don't <laughs> I don't count people's money. Get all your money you can, but I can't justify keeping Tank. Yeah. I, you think it's okay to let him go? It would be a post-June 1 cut, so tanks, it would take a little bit of time? Tank's making more money than Aaron Donald. Yeah. Is he? And look at Aaron Donald. Yeah. But you're going to have that anyway with the market value of I contracts. I hear you. This is I what, hear you. You're not listening. I mean, I'm not, <laughs> not listening. I get it. Jimmy. But like, do we? Do we? Honestly, this is again. This is no shade. I'll say this to to anybody. Do we consider him to be an elite pass rusher? Be honest. Game changing. I, no. Thank you. No, I mean, is he Thank you. 15 sacks a game? No, it's 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 yeah. energy, it's run stop, it's it's pressure. He gets pressure on guys. I think he sets the tone. I've said this many times. He sets tone for the defense. Is he is he Aaron Donald? He's not Aaron no. Donald. No. Nobody's Aaron Donald. Nobody's Aaron Donald. I mean, but when you're I, – my whole thing, if you're going to pay somebody – and I know like, it keeps, money keeps going up every year, right? So it's kind of hard to look at that. And, I'd, again, I don't count people's money. But if you're going to pay that, you need somebody who's going to freaking – you need a Mega Parsons. You know what I'm saying? You need a Michael Parsons. You need somebody who's like, yeah, he's a madman. You can't stop him. You can't stop him. Well, and you won without him as well. Like, you played a lot of games without him this season, and you still won football games without him. Be fair. There are a lot of quarterbacks that shouldn't make more money than Aaron Donald because of the kind of player. Well, as a position, yeah. Yeah, because, yeah absolutely. But yeah. now that you have Michael Parsons, why don't you just keep it real with yourself and just say who can play with Micah? At yep. this point, you know, Michael, who do you want to play with? <laughs> that, let's start asking that question because if the bazooka is out there, we could build around him. Love Trayvon Diggs. I, he's a part of the future plans. But who's going to be able to play with 11? We can't lose Randy Gregory and Tank and think that signing Dorrance Armstrong or bringing Terrell Basham back is going to make our defense better. Basham's yeah. under contract regardless, that's, so that's good. But that's where it gets complicated because then what do you do with Randy? Like, yep. can you – I mean – you don't want to pay Tank that. You turn around and pay Randy X amount of dollars. I would do you can't, that. You want to franchise him at no twenty million? Nope. You don't so, have. You don't have twenty million. Yeah, you, you don't have, don't have that at all. No, I don't know if you want to franchise Dalton Schultz at eleven. You know, no. we talked about that last week, but D- don't have that either. Yeah. I, the thing with Demarcus is, I mean, name what were the biggest wins of the season this year for the Cowboys? What were the biggest wins? If you had to name your top three favorite wins, Rob. Uh, New England, Minnesota. Mm. Chargers. Maybe, Chargers. Yeah, maybe Chargers. Yeah, Chargers. How many of those games was Demarcus Lawrence a part of? Maybe one. O, o of three. O of he wasn't three. he wasn't on the field for any of those games. Chargers game he was he was you hurt know, before he that. Was hurt. He got that was the week before that is when he got hurt. That's why Michael Parsons had to play the defensive end position that that's game. a fair point he did he added something to the group though when he came back no, he definitely no, no did. question about it like, but they no, still won without him though yeah, i mean yeah. and, and, and that. that's the thing right now yeah. is you're having to make decisions on this cap situation of limiting the damage is ultimately what the cowboys offseason is right now is limiting the damage you want to keep as much talent as possible with as little money as possible and one of the ways that you might have to do that is by getting rid of DeMarcus. Yeah, and, and again, this is why these are tough decisions. These, yeah. Yeah. When you let somebody Unless go, he takes a pay cut. If you go and ask him for a pay gonna cut, happen. it's not gonna fine. Happen. He's yeah. going to take yeah. one anyways, but it's not going to happen. But you have to let guys go that 
are impact guys for you. Yeah. And to be an impact guy, that just means that you are you when you're not present, the team misses you. They miss your presence. That's an impact guy. If I'm if I'm not suited up, the team, they're gonna go on. They might even win the game. But guess what? There is that what I bring to the team, they were missing that day. Right. And and I think that I think that D Law is an impact player. I he's had that identity. He's had that identity. I don't think he's an elite player. There's just two there's two different conversations. Mm-hmm. That's not to say he, he has an impact. He's he has a presence. He's physical, no, he's he, motor, all those things. Yeah, you miss him when he's not there. He's gonna hustle, he's gonna do all those things, pressure quarterback. But how many guys can you get on your roster with that same number that can do what he does? No, it, that's why that's why this is a legitimate conversation. No, what, pay, do, what do you do? What pay do you do? has to match production, yeah. and yeah. it hasn't for a long time, yeah. even when, when he finally got the contract. We were talking about it last offseason. He, he was in that conversation of guys who didn't live up to their contract last offseason. And now that it's even there more extended so, I think that's why it's a conversation that needs to be had. The one thing that I loved about the 2021 Cowboys defense is their ability to put pressure on the quarterback and create those turnovers. You got that because of the defensive linemen. Scheme and defensive linemen, right? When you moved Michael Parsons to the edge, it created the kind of pressure where quarterbacks were getting off the ball early. So what does that say? Your defense, your front line is making your linebackers better and, and sequence making your back half better. So... Let's get better up front. If Tank isn't going to be a part of that, if we can get two guys by releasing one guy, then I'm all for that. And that's probably going to come also from the draft. But that's really guesswork. That's why I'm saying the free agent portion of it is going to be so much more important and getting those guys that's been the model of consistency and some guy that we just wish or hope works out. You felt pretty good about the draft the last couple of years. I mean, you feel really good about your first round pick in 2020. You feel very good about your 2021 first round pick. You've drafted well, Trayvon Diggs was a second round pick, and look at him—he leads the NFL in scouting department's killing it. They're killing it, or at least the, the college scouting department. Maybe not so much on the pro scouting department side, but you feel good about your draft, and you got to figure it out there at the same time. So, uh, with, with all that being said, I do want to answer a couple of questions from the fans on the fifty. Let's do it. Antoine Sims asked, and this goes back to the original se- segment. He said, from Isaiah's statement. Let's take Dak from the first part of the season and Joe Burrow from the last part of the season. Who do you guys have going with the team if you were to place them in Dallas at that point moving forward? This is just a fun hypothetical. One more time now. First half of the season, Dak. Last half of the season, Joe Burrow. Who's Who would be better to lead that team moving forward? Because originally in the first segment, you're thinking Joe, right? Yeah. I think first half Dak is better, in my opinion, as a quarterback. On a rookie deal. <laughs> On a rookie deal? Yeah, that'd be nice. Yeah, that's true. No, I would I mean I would say Dak to me, Dak was playing as well as anybody in the league yep. that first half. And that's why I think I don't I and he's not using the calf strain as excuse, so I'm not either. Down the stretch, different production, different different offense. We're talking about 2016. Uh, I'm Dak? going with. I'm no, going. No, we're talking no. first I'm half of 2021. No, I'm, I'm going with Joe. With Dak, I'm going with Joe. Yeah. There, and, with and, Joe? and the reason, and the reason why, and I, I've said this a gazillion times, I think Dak, Dak's success is predicated off of the ability to run the ball. I don't think Dak's a drop back and just throw it, throw it at you, quarterback. I don't. Sure, that's not a bad thing. Well, the read just, option just, was such a big part of this offense all the way up until yeah. his first run ankle game. Injury. Same thing. I mean, to your point, run game, they have to fix it. They, yeah, they it, have to. In the first part yeah. of the season, run game was a money, and that's why yeah. play action became a thing. And Dak will destroy you if he can run play action. Yep. He will pick you apart. However, when there's no play action, it's not the same Dak. Yeah, it's not the same Dak. And I think you can't say that about Joe. That's just, I mean, I, I just feel like that statement isn't like a aha statement because it, you take most of the quarterbacks in the league, if they have a running game, that makes them substantially better. Uh, the, the elite company, the elite company that you're talking about, and that's why I think that's the, the conversation Correct. goes to that because these guys don't necessarily need that. Uh, Joe Burrow was in the Tennessee game, I think, a historically amount of times he was sacked. No running game, no nothing, and he still was able to pull it off, but he needed some help from the other quarterback as well. Yeah. I mean, there's just so many things that happen in the course of a football game where you say, hey, this guy would be more equipped than the other guy. But, hell, if you gave guys t- Ezekiel Elliott 2016, Zeke, ain't a lot. Of, I mean, come on, man. Yeah, yeah. Joe Flacco I mean, but, could be successful I, with that. But I think about guys like Josh Allen, and I think hey, about Joe guys Flacco like was Burrow. You know, like, these are guys Stop. that it doesn't matter <laughs> if they have a run game or not. Like, they'll line up and just throw it, pick you apart. So there, who, there, there, there and are, who are those guys? 
Huh? That's what I'm saying. Like, like I think about a Josh Allen. Like, like, J, like J, the J.A., he, he will pick you apart. And guess what? If it's not open, guess what he's doing? He's running that he's thing. He's taking off. Yeah. He's taking off. Josh so, Allen's a special case, though. How many times are we going to say that, though? <laughs> it's 32. There's 32 quarterbacks you know, in this you league. Make, you're right. It's a great in, point. In the world. We're right. talking about the world. You're right, though. You're supposed to be you're the 32 right, best Can't in the world. That, Can't argue with All of them are supposed to be special cases. Yeah. And you want Dak to be a special case. And you know they all not though. You know they all not. I, on, I know that. that. <laughs> <Stop>. mm. <laughs> all right, let's take our second break. When we come back, we're gonna build and we're gonna fix this team the only way we know how, and that's by drafting well. When we come back here on Talking Cowboys. New Dr. Pepper Zero Sugar. You deserve it. I do deserve that. You deserve decadent flavor without sugar. And a day at the beach without sand getting everywhere. And a relaxing bath that your children don't interrupt. I deserve all that? It's really just a visual metaphor for Dr. Pepper Zero Sugar. Everything you want, nothing you don't. A visual metaphor on the radio. I do deserve that. Dr. Pepper Zero Sugar. The zero you deserve is finally here. At AT AT&T, everyone, new and existing customers, get our best deals on every smartphone. Why? Because you deserve it. For turning your living room into your office and your gym. For teaching grandma how to video call. And teaching her again. It's the button on your left, Nana. Okay, your other left. It's not complicated. Everyone deserves something new. So AT&T has given everyone, new and existing customers, our best deals with every unlimited plan on every smartphone, even the latest ones. AT&T may temporarily slow data speeds if the network is busy. Restrictions and exceptions may apply. The Cowboys way. Where 16 Hall of Famers and five championships shows us what success looks like. Where turkey is always the second best part of Thanksgiving Day where we are all defined by one single thing, the star. Where we as fans know it's our job to keep the tradition going. Bank of America is proud to be the official bank of the Dallas Cowboys and to support the quest of living life the Cowboys way. Copyright 2020, Bank of America Corporation. Before there was a draft, you could size up a cowboy by three simple factors. The crease in his hat, the bend of his brim, and his unbending attitude. A man Stetson didn't just protect him from what life threw at him. It projected a rugged, unstoppable spirit. Stetson hats are still American-made with pride right here in Texas. They're still the unofficial crown of all self-respecting cowboys. And Stetson is proud to be on the field with America's team. Find a retailer nearest you at stetson.com slash cowboys. Back to Talking Cowboys. Whether you're watching from home or you're cheering in the stands with Essilor lenses, you can see every exciting play. Book an appointment at your local Essilor experts and see what Essilor can do for you. See more. Do more. Essilor. Uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. You got to love it. We love our friends over at Essilor. All right, Rob, you have no excuse. Oh. Go go get your Essilors. I know. I know. It's the off season. It's the off season. Go I get, get it time. Done. I got time. For the Hit second time. For the second time, Rob. Yeah, I know. We're about ready like to come Rob, back I feel for like our Rob's second. getting like a custom, super custom pair made, and he's just keeping it on the keeping low. Keeping on the like dog on Batman. Just got a new, I don't know, some kind of new vehicle about Even to come out. Speakers in the back. That comes out like next week. Though. Yep, for, I think the mm-hmm. fourth, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, the big exhibition down there. I'll go I'll I'll I'm go not excited about it. Glasses. I'm not excited about it, Rob. Why? I don't. Uh, the Batman who's movie. Who's the best Batman then? <sighs> Christian Bale. Yeah, I don't know. That's tough. Christian I gotta Bale. go with Bale. Yeah, probably Bale. I don't yeah. like Ben as it. No, no it's Mm-mm. not the same. Not Too a fan. old. You're not a big Robert Pattinson guy. Mm. I haven't seen it yet. <laughs> That's true. It just doesn't. He doesn't feel like a boss. Man, you gotta give him a shot. I'm gonna give him a shot. I'm gonna go watch it. Mm-hmm. It just doesn't. From well, the previews, the previews didn't give I mean, me like that. Ooh, I gotta no. go see this. It's hard I didn't to get mess up either. Yeah, it's hard to mess up Bruce Wayne. I mean, he's a billionaire. But every other Batman, Bachelor. every other Batman preview had you ready to go bust down the dog on doors. Yeah, even the, the Ben theater. Affleck ones did. Yeah, true. This one didn't have that vibe. No, nope. which means be maybe it'll be. Ah, a great, I hope I am surprised. Oh, the ones in the mid '90s were bad. Mm-hmm. Clooney, yeah. Clooney was Batman, and it was just like a cartoon. <laughs> I wasn't watching. I wasn't uh, going to the movie. Who was the other one? <laughs> Val Kilmer was Batman. Those movies were terrible. Mm, terrible. Yeah. Hey, man, I don't know. I'm killing my childhood right now. Well, no, 89 Batman. 
with uh, Keaton <laughs> yeah. and Nicholson. Kyle Michael was like Keaton. minus twelve back then. <laughs> Michael, that Keaton was the Batman. Batman. Thank you. That was Batman, right? Yes. Yeah. God. That was original. I had to have that VH cassette when it came Thank out. You. Kyle. Come I had on. to. Have it. Did you have the automatic rewinder? <laughs> did you? I don't think so. <laughs> you remember no, that? I don't think so. You didn't it have the automatic like rewinder. I you know, did. you push a button and it pops up. You slide in. You put it back down. It was like a car. Yeah. You can. No, I didn't have it. Oh, that was good stuff. No. I didn't have it either. I, knew, I know. I knew somebody who had it. Okay. It blew. Oh, yeah. It blew my muffin cap when I went to the house and I saw it. <laughs> I was like, "What is that?" They're like, "Have oh, you never seen one of these?" <laughs> oh, it rewinds God. your VGA VHS. Oh, I could probably Lord. find you around. Kyle around didn't even know what a DVD. Yeah, player. you guys probably got oh, one. Oh, I know right a DVD somewhere. player. That DVD player was like my childhood. I, I was at the DVD very tail. End. Yep, I was Jesus. at the very right. tail end of the VHS era. I had I had a VHS player in my bedroom as a child. Okay. Have you yeah. ever manually rewound a, <laughs> a VHS cassette? tape? No, a cassette. No, I was not a cassette. Did dude. you ever go to Blockbuster? Once. <laughs> Once. One time. God. There was one on Hewitt Drive in Waco that I went to. It's now an Auto Zone, and <laughs> I went I went there. One, one, once or twice. You were in a stroll. I think I like, I, yeah, I think I like ordered Veggie Tales or something. That's, that's probably what show. it was. Yeah, it was like Veggie Tales or like Land Before Time. One of those oh, two. That's a good one too. Yeah. Did you go to Blockbuster and get a laser disc? No, nope. <laughs> I, I don't even know what a laser disc is, honestly. Oh, dude. But yeah, that's it. Uh, that's that's that it. Yep. That's yep. it. Is that it? That's Batman it. DVD Cowboys. Okay. <laughs> no. Uh, all right, I want to. I want you to give me my wish list. What what should we be looking for for Cowboys draft needs position wise? What do you want to come out of the draft of? And I'm talking high quality first, second round guys. If you if you're going into day three, so I'll even throw the third round in there. If you're going into day three without this position, you're putting your fist on the table. Dang it, we didn't get the job mm. done the right way. What are those position groups for the Cowboys? Hmm. I'm going to say offensive linemen. Yeah, interior. Uh, interior. Yeah, line. interior. Um, Need at least one, right? Exactly. Okay. I'm going to go linebacker. Wow. Yep. I'm okay. going to go linebacker. And I'm also going to say, not safety, I'm going to go corner. Corner. Okay. Corner. Yep. Play with Anthony Brown, Trayvon Diggs. I need another Jordan corner. Lewis. Yeah. Okay. I'm, I'm on the Heckman train. I agree. All, the, all three of those. What about wide receiver? Nope. Nobody said wide receiver <clears throat> yet? You got Simi Fajoko. <laughs> Throw the whole book Why? at him. <laughs> I feel like we're doing OTAs. Are we, are we, are we okay? I held it together. I held the reaction. Beck almost threw that. He, he legit whole... picked up the notebook. <laughs> To the 21 Bible lets you talk. Please tell the viewers at home that you're joking. Please. I was joking. I was not joking. Yeah, they what? invested. He's was oh, fifth, fifth round, round pick. I mean, it's not an investment. Tell me when you get to April and what he's getting what, paid nine hundred thousand dollars next year. Where's Amari? Where's said? Where's Gallup? I mean, you think we they held on to him? You think they held on to him all season long, not putting him out there one time to not play him this year? Sometimes you just don't want to be wrong. Hmm, that's a good point. Sometimes you just don't want to be. It wrong. happens more than you think. Where's Reggie Robinson? Who uh, exactly? I R. Yeah, I'm just saying. That's a phantom eye. They try to change his position. They did, and then he didn't play on either position. So, yeah. as a and fourth also, round pick, and also tight end. Let me, let me throw that in there. Tight end. <sighs> okay, so now you've put four must-have positions in the first three rounds. We only have three picks. Damn it! Make a yeah. trade. <laughs> <laughs> that means we're trading back up to go get somebody. Rob, who are your positions? Offensive line, interior offensive line. You give me a tackle too. You can make that one and two for me. Uh, I, I'm with Heck on linebacker. I, I mean, yeah, yeah, that's the top <laughs> ones. Right. The top ones, but but like we just we just talked about receiver and defensive ends kind of the same way. It's like tell me who's coming back. Yeah, by late April. Yep. If if you're they're not, then all of a sudden your your draft needs change dramatically. What what receivers do you guys think are coming back? Honestly. Uh, With all the releases, trades, whatever, free agency, who's coming back? It's a purely impossible question to answer. I, understand. I would say it's 50-50, and I said this the other day. I think it's 50-50 Amari's here. 50-50. That's what straight up your heart? flip. I, I don't know. That's the thing. I would, it's a 50-50. This is hard, I mean, it's hard to talk about a player that you have under contract that should be a dog in yep. your offense that isn't. Why? I, I 
Uh, your offensive coordinator. Come on, Thank man. You. you don't have to lead me into Thank it. It's not the player. It's not the player. It's not the player. It's, yeah. It absolutely isn't. But we're not using him, and that money's going to waste. And if we're gonna, whatever scheme he's trying to put together, whatever he's doing, he's, then, escape, he's gonna be the scapegoat. He is right now for the money. Yeah, it's yeah. Because it's because of the terrible. contract. Yeah, that's terrible. You got a dog on your team, and you're unwilling to unleash him. Terrible. So you get so you so you take him to the pound. So and you get in the shot. The question that we was asked was who's going to be back. <laughs> that's what that's what had to happen, right? I don't know. Turner, I, would, I wouldn't be surprised either way. You're going to bring Turner back. Brown's back for sure. I mean, there's no way to get with it. I that think guy. Cedric comes back to a certain extent. So you, everybody's coming back, but Amari. That's what y'all saying. No, I didn't say that's any everybody. of those That's everybody. That's Gallup. I, I didn't know, say I don't those know. names. I don't know if Ced's back. Ced might get a deal where you're like, Massive Whoa. deal. Yeah, maybe. And if he does, maybe. that's kudos good, to Yeah, him. good for him. But I think if Amari does not come back, I think both Gallup and Ced are back. In some shape, fashion, and form, I think they're both back. I bet, you, I bet you Dallas drafts a receiver. Yeah, yeah. I bet you they do. Good. Watch. I think they will. I think they'll probably do it in the second round, maybe the third. That. Yeah. I'm telling you, it, it, I'm, I'm I'm guarantee there's a high opportunity for them to draft a player in the second or the third round. Yeah, and and, and you know what? We're, obviously, we're, we're going to get into. Do we get to talk <laughs> free agent? We had to talk some free agent talk here. We will probably will next week, but it's hard to talk free agency when you have twenty one million dollars over the cap. Hey, and you no, what will be your reaction at. if the Cowboys use a second round pick <clears throat> on a receiver? I'm a I, hey man, I'm gonna turn over. Are something. you gonna need a new Get ready. TV? Yeah, Get ready. it's just it's uh, it's gonna be hard to believe, but mm-hmm. you know we we probably if. Some the glimmer in his eye over there. I don't know it's what a twinkle. it is. It is. I don't like it. I don't like it. He knows something. Get ready. But I don't know. I, that'd be upsetting, but, you know, stranger things have happened. I. But that's the thing. Yeah, the TV is show. It, is it really that upsetting? Because if Amari Cooper's not back, where is wide receiver in terms of your needs? Isn't that why you draft the CD? That's my, yes. Okay. Yes, that is why. But it's CD. Isn't, isn't that why you draft the CD? It's, it's, one some it's point, yes. CD and Simi Fajoko looking at each other in a wide receiver. So you're room. saying Gallup doesn't come back? I'm, that's what I'm saying. If none of those guys come back, where is your wide receiver room? Well, you would sign somebody. You, you would. I mean, you, you would, would know what that's would, looking like before the draft, right? No, yeah. not necessarily. You, they, well, they they always try to cover themselves to some degree. Now, would it be the receiving core that we saw last year? No, no. hell no. no. Window closed. Mm. But but Give but me a name. there are teams that do more with less. Not more with really? less, but 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 can function without elite wide receiving core. Now, maybe I'm talking about Tom Brady, but. In his New England days. Okay, you said name. Yeah, give me a name. Wide receivers? Yeah. It drafted wide receivers, right? Yeah. Uh, George Pickens, Georgia. Justin Ross, Clemson maybe. Alec Pierce, Cincinnati. Jalen Tolbert, Southern Alabama. Or South Alabama. Okay. Yeah, those are four guys that are right around that second, third round range. That could potentially be there. Man, and, mm. and is this, is this going to be like a, 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 a best player available kind of situation when you get to your pick on and think, like that – we just can't turn this. Day. So that's going to be the philosophy in 2022 draft room? I think at 24, yes. But honestly, yeah, first three rounds, I would say yes, for sure. I think then you'd fill in the needs after that. But <clears throat> it's been that way the last two years, and you feel pretty good about it. C.D. Lamb <laughs> was drafted. Yeah. Draft. yeah. Oh, you got a hernia, bro. C.D. <laughs> Lamb got drafted, and that wasn't the number one need. Wide receiver was not a Facts. need in that spot, but everybody was pumped about C.D. Lamb. Is there a C.D. Down. in this draft? Uh no, okay. nobody I'd have above CD, but there's good wide receivers. Okay. I'm not saying draft him at 24. I don't think you're going to see a first round receiver. Ah, you can't do that. No, I don't think needs. there's a first round receiver that you would draft as the Cowboys at 24 because of your <laughs> needs moving forward. Second round, yeah, I think there's a good possibility that they could maybe draft somebody that as would, a pass that catcher. Would be, that wow. would make a lot of people angry. I wouldn't be surprised if it's offensive line, defensive line in round one. Then you would go receiver, linebacker, round two, and then corner. And this, these are just the options that are available, not multiple picks in that draft. And then I would say corner, tight end, maybe rounds three and four, something like that. That's yeah. probably the way it's shaping up Wait, in my thought process. Where did you have offensive line? First First, first round. round, okay. Yeah, first round. Because I, eh, yeah, I wouldn't wait on that. There's although, a, although, look, man, you move LC to left guard, yep. or if he wants to do that, uh, Terrence Steele at right tackle, then maybe you solve things for a year. Yeah, so we're we'll trying to solve things. For we're you. on to moving LC to left guard now. I, I would. I think totally it's something. I think it's something they definitely need to look at. Yep, because 
you don't have a lot of resources to do anything else. So try, shuffle it around. I, th- I thought they should have taken a harder look at it during the season. Is it easier in this draft to draft a right tackle or a left guard? Probably a left tackle. guard. It would be tackle. The guy from Texas A&M. That he every- might not be there. That's okay. the thing. There's a huge drop off of guys interior wise. There's Linderbaum, Tyler Linderbaum out of Iowa, and then there's Kenyon Green out of out of Texas A and M. Those are your two interior guys that you hope falls to 24. Both of those guys are most likely to be gone by the time 24 gets to you. After that, there's a significant drop off between those guys. That where you would probably rather take a linebacker N'Kobe or Dean. an edge rusher. Yeah, Nakobe Dean. He may not be there either. Don't come on. But there's there's possibilities there as opposed to I guess drafting random people from other positions like we've seen happen in the past. Can we draft Rob P? Oh, he's first round draft pick I'm all not the time. Eligible. Mm. I'm not eligible. Yeah, I think your knees would get knocked at the combine. <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah. I'm boycotting the combine. Are you? Yes. Oh, gosh. Speaking no, that of, got resolved. Yeah, it got, got resolved real quick in a hurry. Yeah, it did. We could have talked about that today, but darn. 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 Dang, uh, well, you guys will get to talk plenty of combine next week. I will be in Indianapolis, so you guys will it's get a phone week. call from me. It's next week. Jesus. I leave on Sunday. I will be back wow. two weeks from now, but I'll be on the on the show next week. I believe Heckma will probably be hosting this. Oh, we're going to have some fun, baby. Again. <laughs> Turn down your headphones prior like to it. yeah no <laughs> Isaiah's very happy today. Like Good performance, you guys. Well done. Hey, hey, Great, hey, show. Hey. Great show. Great show. <laughs> Got through an entire hour, and that's all I'm here for. <laughs> that does it for us here on Talking Cowboys, presented by Tostitos for Chris Beam in the back, Rob Phillips, Isaiah Stanback, Heckma Harris, and I'm Kyle Yeomans. We'll see you next week Beamer. here on Talking Cowboys. This has been a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about this, Cowboys? Yeah!